Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Nicole with Made From Scrap and I wanted to welcome you to week four of our easy mixed media mini series that we're doing. And can you guess what is going to be the medium we're working with today? The techniques that we're gonna be working with? Hopefully, distress paints. So wanted to encourage you to pull out your paints, uh, pull out your dyes, Let's play with a little bit of water. Let's play with some stamps. And the other technique that I'm going to be working with is just an old book. So let me kind of give you a little rundown. I wanna show you a project. I'm gonna highlight some of the uh, prior paper collections from Country Craft Creations that are still available at Country Craft Creations. You can still order them. They will always be available there. Um, but I wanted to show you a little bit about highlighting what we have done over the past three weeks. So here is our first paper collection. This is called Midnight Kiss. We are also gonna be um, using some of this paper collection on the scrapbooking hop that's gonna be here on YouTube from Country Craft Creations. So I wanna encourage you to join the scrapbookers of Country Craft Creations um, group. And that way you can attend. It is free to attend and we have a lot of fun. So there's pre-recorded videos for you that become available at certain times throughout the evening and daytime uh, for you to take advantage of. So. Here's a couple of the cut up parts. I use, I glued on uh, some little odds and ends, just the shiny things, the little doodads um, that are available from Country Craft Creations through Buttons and Galore. And then I used some of the cut up parts and uh, border strips that were available. I used some washi strip uh, tape from my stash. In order to create some space, um, in this altered book, you have to tear some pages out. So this is the last uh, decorative page that I'm going to have in the middle of this book. And I'm looking forward to using the Christmas Dreams collection. So a couple of things. This is my stamp from my stash that I'm going to be using. This is one of the Julie Nutting stamps and you can check out the website at countrycraftcreations.com and check out a couple of uh, Julie Nutting other stamps that are available still. Uh, she's no longer making stamps but uh, Tamara does have a few other ones in her shop that are left but you can do this uh, technique with any type of stamp okay. Um, cutting it out, whether or not it's a flower or you name it. So you can do that. Another thing that I wanted to show you from the Christmas Dreams collection is that these are the cut apart. So I wanted to give you a size reference. Uh, this one on the right here is from the 12 by 12 collection. And then this one on the left is from the eight by eight collection. So you can see the size difference here. And this was important for me because I also am wanting to use this die uh, from my collection here. This is a new die that I picked up this year, so I want a chance to use it. And you can see, if you want the larger Nutcracker um, size comparison, maybe that one's for you to use. I think I'm choosing to use this smaller one from the 8x8 paper collection, okay? So grab your water. You need some water uh, for these distress paints, but if you do not have distress paints, you can use acrylic paints as well. So don't be afraid to mix up your paints. Just grab a, a book from you know the local store, uh, the repurposed shop off of your bookshelf that you no longer want to use. That's what I did, and rip out some pages. So. I think I probably am ripping out somewhere in the neighborhood of uh, five to 10 pages. You want a decent size gap in there if you're gonna be putting any type of 
thickness. So the thicker, let's see if I can get this to focus. Uh, the thicker you're going to have your page, the more of a gap you're going to want to make sure that you have in that spine to allow you space for whatever it is that you're going to play around with, okay? So keep that in mind. Uh, you may want to keep it thinner. Um, I did it all different ways, so depending on if I had a bunch of thick stuff, I ripped out even more pages. I also took a look at the number of pages that were in the book and divided up by about how many um, different pages I wanted to decorate in there to get almost an assessment of how many pages in between because I did go ahead and glue typically three pages together uh, sandwich it in here. I used my art glitter glue to close that up. So hopefully that is everything so we can get going. All right, I'm going to start out with just some white artisan cardstock. I cut these up into um, pieces that were approximately four by six. Um, I'm working on top of a glass mat so it's easy to uh, clean up and and just spreading these out. So I cut these all up and I am going to make sure to um, mix up your paint. So your distressed paints are going to have a ball inside. You want to make sure, can you hear that? Um, you want to make sure that you have shaken these up enough so that they're good and stirred. Right, so I am starting with a little sponge. You can use a paper towel, but I am just going to just get it mildly damp here just so that it's easier to work in my hand and it's not so hard. Um, this is going to be my main color that I want to focus on, which is Rustic Wilderness. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with that. And really all I'm after is to go ahead and place down some color, okay, on these pages. And what we have to be careful of with this paint is once it dries, it's dried. So I'm trying to get just some greens on there, but I want to, the whole point in distress is that we spray it with the water, okay? So if we want stuff to move around, we're gonna spray it with the water, okay? Now, I'm going to go ahead and work on just these couple of sheets first. I'm going to go ahead and open up another one of my colors and use, squirt a little bit on another section of my, get, um, of my sponge here. And then you can kind of see that the areas that are already uh, drying, they're going to be dried. So um, you're just going to play with it. And work with it. Now if you really want the color to move around then you want to use some watercolor cardstock but uh, I'm good with this. So I'm going to take another color and I'm just going to keep layering this on. So again, colors. Now we're, I'm going to be die cutting this so it's really about just getting the difference in colors for me on here because this is going to be used for my tree okay so let me get this a quick dry and then i'm going to go ahead and place this sponge in the water so that it doesn't dry hard and then i will be right back now doesn't this just look like a hot mess that's why you don't judge mixed media until you're done. Well, you don't judge it at all. But anyway, that's why you just keep working <laughs> with mixed media. So I'm gonna go ahead and set this aside and I'm gonna move on to these. All right, I have to tell you, honest opinion, uh, paint, watching paint dry is not very fun. So a lot of these techniques I try to do just uh, to be faster. So I think I would try to stick with, if I'm trying to do a marbling technique, uh, some of the sprays instead because it dries a lot, lot, lot faster. Um, I even used my heat tool uh, to dry these, but um, could be 
could be the paper I used. That's the choice that I, I made as well because I'm using the Artisan cardstock and not water um, watercolor cardstock for this. But I like the, the way that it looks and I'm going to be die cutting these. So that's the next step. I'm going to go ahead and die cut and I will be right back in a snap. 